Okay, so here we are in the spray bay. Um, first thing we need to do is blacken out the actual glass work. Now the reason for doing this is so when you look through it, okay, it gives the impression of being black on the inside, which obviously most modern aircraft are. And secondly, it will give you a great depth. If you're going to be going over in things like light greys, certainly blues, things like that, sort of Second World War colours, if you don't pre-shade the actual area first, what's going to happen is, is that it's actually going to give you a sort of translucent look through it. It makes them look completely solid uh, and everything else like that. So what we just need is a tiny little bit of the tack. Just grab a bit here, <clears throat> just to hold down the, the seat into position. It won't need a great deal on here. So the seats aren't fitted or anything down into these yet, purely so we can get to them if needed and everything else. All right, so what we're gonna do, flat black, this is just Tamiya XF1. Okay, and then what we're going to do is pour this neat, and when we say neat, obviously we mean unthinned, straight into the color cup. Not much, not gonna need tons here. Okay, mm -hmm. check our spray, fine with that. Flick it on the extractor, health. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is literally just spray the canopy area, light dusty coat to start with. This way might be a bit better. Just so the paint's got something to stick to. Okay, and then once you've got a bit on there, you can go a little bit further. And all we're trying to do is obviously do the black bit itself. Now what you don't want to do is come along underneath trying to spray up because otherwise all you're going to do is fill up the cockpit and whilst dusty things are quite nice if you've got like a little dusty bit going underneath it in there it's just like real life by the time you put a little bit of dry brushing over it if you've got canopies open things like that it gives a great weather effect other things we're going to do since we've got the black paint on the go here we're going to do these intakes okay in black paint so when we sand over them, we can see exactly what we got. We'll need these wing roots. Again, so we can see what we got. Anywhere where we've had a joint, we're just going to give it a bit of a blow over just to see what we've got. Because it's a great way of seeing it. Using black makes things stand out, especially when you start sanding it. So we go down the other side. And what we're looking for is anything really out of the norm, okay? So, little joints are to be expected, okay? And because it is a panel line, we'll use those to our advantage uh, a little bit later on. But what we're trying to do here now is seeing if we've got anything hugely out of the way. So, if we just have a quick look here, if we just turn this off, excuse the compressor but what we're looking for just down here is to see exactly how much we've got out of position okay so in this one here it's quite nice we've got a tiny little bit of seam there but nothing that I'd be worried about at all on this side again it's basically invisible and that's what we're trying to do you want it to the point where you look at it and think yep that's pretty good I'm happy with that this top one here where it's a refueling point obviously for Air Force jets but for Navy it's just a panel on the top again it is a panel, okay, so it has got some small lines around it, but obviously we don't want it to have glue marks, bumpy marks, things like that. It's all got to be smooth to blend in. Again, looking at the cockpit, you know, could do with a tiny bit more just on the here. But what we're looking here is to see how the cockpit clear part is joining the main fuselage and making sure that we're all happy of how it's actually all laid out and everything else like that. And looking at this top area, we're happy with the wing joints. I'm happy with these wing roots. No problem with those at all. So what we're going to do is just flip it over. Okay, and we're just going to do the same on the underside. Just to see if we're happy how these seams join. And if you've got a, an area where, you know, it's going to be a, a call to sort of see, go past it in both directions quite a bit. Just don't stay localised on it, otherwise you won't be able to tell. You can just dry it, just capture air, 
drying this off, okay, and we'll have a look. Now don't be sort of drawn in a little bit because the filler itself is very porous and will absorb all your paint. But you're looking to see if there's a big step, okay. I've got a little tiny one here. I'm thinking we've got a sparrow missile going to sit in there and its tail fin is going to cover that join quite nicely. So I'm not too worried about that one, if I'm honest. Okay, as for this side, we're pretty much perfect. So we're just going to check around these door areas now. Just to see around the speed brake, we're just going to check these outer areas. Okay. We just want to see how we've got. Now, doors, they're a, quite a funny one. Come down here. Okay, we're out of gas. With doors, things like that. Don't be too worried about doing doors. The great thing with doors is, in reality, they never close totally flush and absolutely perfect. Hence, whilst when you paint these, we're going to be doing them slightly different because they tend to be down in the weather. Okay, so obviously it's taxiing around on the ground, on the carrier, things like that. The doors are always a different shade to around the actual area itself. So don't be too worried about it. I'm going to show you a little bit about painting that and how to get a nice sort of diversity with it and everything else. But generally, what we're trying to do at the moment is use the Tamiya paint to see if there's any problems because the great thing with using Tamiya acrylics is they sand beautifully okay and that's the thing so now you can go along if you wanted to and if you saw an area you're thinking I'm not sure you come along with a fine sanding sponge give a little bit of a rub everywhere and you can see exactly what you've got with it that way you can come back with a little bit more Tamiya paint spray it on dry it on job done now after you've done this I'll move on with something like our surface primers now we've used this primer before it's not exactly the best stuff for a quick fix primer it's great for long term because it needs a couple of days to totally dry so if you're in a hurry probably not the best stuff but I do like it because it a lovely finish so what we're going to do is set this aside let it totally dry now have a look all over it check all these seam lines and if we're all happy with it if we are happy what we're going to do then is stick a little bit of foam down just this inside of each intake okay and then we'll come back and we'll have a go with the primer of putting the primer right over the entire thing Okay, so as you can see, Phantom is all completely done. Okay, so we've had a look around. We're happy of how these seam lines are. The ones we were having real sort of worries were, were to be honest, these ones down here because we wanted to make sure we had no obvious seam line difference. Now, you might be able to see we've got a slight end in the actual uh, the panel lining and stuff going down here. What we want to do really is get some primer onto this one just so we can see exactly what's going on with it. So, usual thing with our primer, we have my airbrush here, which to be honest got a little bit of green paint left on it from last time, so a tiny little bit of thinners. I'm going to blow all of that out. Now to be honest, the temperature in here is quite high today, so what we're going to do is we're just going to add a few drops of get this all around here, a few drops of thinners into our mix. So what we're going to do is take thinners into the colour cup. So we've got roughly around about um, probably around about sort of 15% in there. We're going to be using the Valero Surface Primer, which we quite like this stuff. Now this stuff, as we know, is a bit like latex. Okay, so it goes on um, and looks a little bit odd. So you have to take your time sort of building up your colors and everything else. So we'll just give this a good old mix up. In the color cup. Okay, so extract goes on. Check our flow, we're happy with our flow. We're starting the underside. Okay, and what we're gonna do is just lightly put down a very fine coat of this first. You see it more happening on the black than certainly you can anywhere else. The idea is this just gives something for it all to stick to. Don't worry about it being speckly. It's all sort of self-leveling and nice. If you're getting real heavy speckling, just check the end of your nozzle is okay. Okay, and as you make more and more passes, as it dries on here, you can sort of pick up the pace a little bit, putting more and more down. We do the same on the rears. These tail planes aren't attached at all, they'll come off. Okay. 
eight on them. So the more fast as you go, just make it a little bit more heavy. It's quite tricky to see this stuff on white because it is very, very light, but as you go, you'll get up. Picking up the pace now, putting down a thicker coat. going in first, lots of primer, good old stir, now as I say it's a blisteringly hot day today so just be aware things might dry a little bit quicker than normal and you might end up with a rough texture so just keep it light for the first pass and then your other passes, we're going to come in a little bit more heavy. As soon as you've got something to bite on, as you see like there, you can come in more heavy. Now, to be honest, we've just got a little bit of a drip happen. If you get a drip on your airbrush, just make sure you clean it all off. Otherwise, it's going to give you no end of trouble. Gently going to build it all up. Check the nozzle every now and again just to make sure you're all okay. And then once you've got something down, you come in a little bit more heavy. Okay. And then again, dusting on these wings. Run out of places to hold this. I say important to get a dusty coat on first. Let that dry for a few moments and then you come in with a thicker, heavier coat, okay? Okay, wing roots, where you get this join, you get a vortex of air going around. So what we want to do is put in quite a heavy blast in those areas. This will stop that happening. Don't worry about panel lines filling up. It will self-level and you will be okay. So don't worry. Again, heavy, 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 leave it. Heavy, heavy. Cut to air if you're worried at all. Just get a bit of a skin appeared on the outside of it. Okay, and then leave it. this all down and then I'll be able to handle it and then we can come in with a second coat which will be a little bit heavier pop that down right the way over it and then we're good to go with pre-shading